AC, AC, hey, Mogul. What's good? What's good? Yeah. All right. So first, before we get into it, did it get dark where you was at? Yeah. Did- yeah I'm in West Virginia now. Are you in West Virginia? Yeah. I'm in West Virginia, and it didn't get. Did it get complete dark, or did it just? like a dim switch. I don't think it got dark or dim. I don't think it hit this area. It like passed over us. I think so because where where are you at? Off of 77? Yeah, pretty that's, much, yeah. That's where, all right, what where in West Virginia are you at? Because I'm heading towards Parkersburg. I'm in Martinsburg. Get the fuck out of here. Wait, you at a where truck you? wait, you at a truck stop or you're you're at a hey, Huh? Do you say Martinsburg was an M or was a P? P Parkersburg. Oh no, I'm in M Martinsburg. Oh Mark, oh, okay, because I'm I'm over here on I'm I'm in well the big dot says Parkersburg, so. Yeah, I'm in Martinsburg. Yeah, I I think it passed I I think it passed over us too because I'm I'm driving down 77 and at and at the time and at the time where everybody says it was dark for like four minutes, it wasn't dark mm-hmm. over here. Yeah, no, that's because it's a map of it. Like, there's a map of where the eclipse is traveling, and it doesn't travel. It didn't travel through West Virginia. It went, it skipped us. It's in, it looked, part of, the closest one to us, I think, is Charlotte, and they got a partial. All right, so let's get into it, AC the mogul. So, listen, man, uh, I wanted to wanted to bring you back on you just you just made a comment in 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 the in the day ross mtc video and Mm -hmm. i i didn't realize that you have experience with them i when when, i'm I'm working with them right now when did you when did you start started with day ross i got hired um august 31st and they hired well I, i went to orientation on the 31st and they hired me on september 1st so I've been with them almost seven months now. Ooh, why, why, why the delay between orientation and actually getting on? It was only one day. Oh, okay. okay. Orientation on the 31st of August, and then I started with them September 1st. So it was only one day. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All mm-hmm. right. So one day orientation. How did you find out about them? Um, I've seen an ad, I think, somewhere. Uh... Maybe on Indeed. And then I was like, I never heard of this company. Um, I seen an ad on Indeed, and it was saying that they had a guarantee minimum. And that was interesting to me because I was looking for jobs that have minimum, that have like a minimum weekly guarantee. And this one came up on Indeed. So I just, I was like, I never heard of this company. So I looked on the website and everything. It looked legit. But I'm just like, I still never heard of it. And it's a Canadian-based company. So then I went on YouTube and started, like, trying to see if there's other. I always look to see if other people work at these jobs. And I went ahead and applied. And then I looked on YouTube to see if there was any other employees that made a video about the company since I had never heard of it. And I came across your video that said, um... You know, you had did an interview with them or something like that. I'm like, oh snap! I just applied for them. So yeah, that, that was kind of like confirmation that it was that it was cool to do. Um, so I just went ahead and applied like that. Okay, okay. What's up? Shout out to the MTC, Dave Ross. Mm-hmm. So before I continue, my my MTCs actually work, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Oh, okay. What's the MTC? Make the call. It is yeah, it, yeah, yeah that's used, a, that's the name good, um, yeah the name of it used to be lockout men made the call but I I dropped the lockout men and I just said MTC so so man that was that was helpful oh. it made me feel like it was reassuring I'll say okay okay shout out to the MTC all right so now you went through orientation and you you said you wanted to get with the company because of, of a guarantee. Now, I am not a fan of guarantees because of the stipulations that they put in place for you to get them. What was the stipulations for you to get whatever the amount that they was guaranteeing every week? So it's a 1600 a week minimum guarantee. Um, you have to be available for... Uh, when I started, you have to be available, uh, I think, seven days a week for the two weeks. But I've seen something recently that said you have to be available 10 days out of 14 days. So um, that could just be because of the home time. So basically, it's it's 
two weeks out and two to three days home. So that's probably why they say um, 10 days out of 14 days. But when I started, it was two weeks out and two days home. Um, so you just have to be available during that time and you would get the guaranteed 1600 minimum. However, they also pay, um, which another reason why I went ahead and applied to this company is because they pay 71 cent a mile. And this was like the highest paying company that was trying to hire me at the time. Also, there was, uh, I had an accident on my record, like a small um, fender bender type of situation back in 2021. It's actually not even on my record. It's something that happened is guilty reportable, but I don't think nobody reported it because it it doesn't come up so I was kind of fearful but this was the this company was willing to hire me regardless of that so the 71 cents a mile the fact that it was willing to hire me with that um, which I thought was on my record and also the $1,600 minimum guarantee is why I wanted to um, get with this company okay okay day Ross out of Canada but this but the place that you went to do orientation and pick up the truck is here in America. They do have an American terminal, right? Yes, I wouldn't even. I mean, I guess you can call it a terminal. It's 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 not. It's I guess you can call it a terminal. Um, it's it's a place that A and S Canard is what it's called. That's their local division, or basically like the umbrella company, and that's in York, PA. So yeah, you go to York, PA. And I think they also have a Michigan. They have a few different locations, but I went to the York PA office. Um, and a lot of people from Chicago and stuff come to the York PA office as well. Now, um, you say yeah. a, you say A&S or S&A Canard? A&S, right? No, a and Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they Ross brought or acquired A&S Canard back in the day. So are they still, are they, I know they're running up under full day Ross now, but are they, are, do they still have any, a, a, what is it, A&S Canard trucks and trailers? Yeah, the a, they do in York, PA mostly, but A&S is usually the local division. Okay. so They, they had another site too, um, out near um in pennsylvania um the allen near allentown i can't remember there's a couple of different spots like little small spots where they have some local ans but it's not like a big major like it's not a prime ink or nothing like that it's just like a small division okay okay a and s a mm -hmm. a and s canard okay and day ross mm -hmm. All right, all right. So seventy-one cent a mile. That's that's amazing. Really good. Like like yeah, that's yeah. for a company driver. W two starting yep. out. Yep. With your experience. Yep. yep. So if you and I and me, I've been here four years, and I've had coworkers that's only been driving for six to six months, and they are still making the same. They started off at seventy-one cent a mile. Well, that's on this contract that I'm with. So there's two separate contracts at Dan Ross. Um, that I know of is the one that I'm on where we basically would run for quad graphics. So we haul mostly paper routes. So um, it's dry van, it's paper routes, anything dealing with ink, ink cartridge, like big ink things where you, you know, that they used to run the, they call them paper rolls also. Um, anything regarding paper. So it could be magazines, newspapers. I haul a lot of like USPS stuff. Um, back and forth to different post offices. So anything with paper, anything has something to do with paper is what we haul. And then you have the other division, which is still Dan Ross, but they get paid, I think it's 63 or 61 cent a mile. And that one is more like they just go all over the United States. This one that I met, we just stay pretty much, um, the furthest I ever went out was like the tip of Wisconsin, like barely, like maybe like an hour into Wisconsin. And everything else is, from that and on back over to the east and then, you know, obviously south and north. So nothing out west. But the other division, I think you go everywhere. And the other division is like three three weeks out and so many days home. I'm not too familiar with that side, but they do get paid a little lower and they don't get a guarantee. Okay. So if you see, yeah, it'll, it'll say, um, if it says 71 cents a mile, then you know that you're on the contract that I'm that I'm on, and that's the one with the 1600 minimum guarantee. But if it says 60 months in a mile, that's a that's the regular damn loss, and there's no guarantee. Okay. Now, two part question: Do you do do mm -hmm. your pay generate 
from here in the states, or do it generate yeah. from from Canada? No, it's uh, it's uh, actually on my on my payer W two. It says something about Michigan, so I'm assuming they have like a, they must have like a corporate office or something in Michigan. I've never been there and seen it personally, but um, the York PA is. You're going to do everything. It's, it's a Canadian-based company, but we don't work in, like, I'm not working in Canada. Like, I've never even taken a trip out to Canada. So they pay through the United States. Um, but they do also have some local positions. I'm just going to touch on this a little bit because at one point I was considering taking a position with Dan Ross in Buffalo, New York. And that one, um, it, it's a rare thing. I only seen it once in this seven months, and then it was it was gone. The job was filled that quick. So it was just like a local position in Buffalo, New York, and it was going into Canada every day, and you would come home every night. And that one, um, it wasn't a guarantee pay. It wasn't a cent per mile. It was $25 an hour. So you'll catch sporadically, like, random um, local positions in certain states. Like, I know I've seen some in Ohio, different spots in Ohio, and I think that's really mostly Ohio, and then I've seen that one in Buffalo, but... That's kind of rare. That's kind of been a rare thing for me to catch. But, okay. yeah, everything okay. is U.S.-based. Okay, Dave Ross. Now, my second question is, uh, do they accept SAP drivers? Um, I'm actually not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I actually just learned what that term was right before I got hired with them. So I, I didn't even know what that was. But now I do. I understand that it's people who have had maybe, like, they smoked weed or something, and it's on their record, their C- CDL. So I guess it's like a second chance type of thing. But no, I'm I'm really honestly not sure. I think that would be a question that um you, you might want to ask Dan Ross because I really don't know. All right. So now that we got all the meat and potatoes out the way and, and the fact that you've been there for a while and, and, you, and you're making good money, why are you leaving? So, well, first I want to say thanks for giving me a call and letting me shed light on this company because, like I said, it was pretty cool that I applied and then seen it on your channel. Like, that was just reaffirming for me. Like, go ahead and, and do it. And especially knowing, like I said, it's a Canadian-based company and I didn't really know much about it. I also thought about doing a, a review of them on my channel, but I just never got around to it. I haven't really been on YouTube like that. The reason I'm leaving, this is my last week with them. Um, I left. I gave them my... I gave them my I just pretty much gave them a resignation today. I sent, I emailed a resignation to the HR department and all my dispatchers, just, you know, letting them know that Saturday will be my last day. So there was honestly, if I'm going to be honest, there was two, um, there's two reasons why I'm leaving. Um, I'll get to the less complicated one first. Well, less complicated for the listeners. It's just that, um, you know, everybody who has been on my channel, this my channel probably seen it, that video that's got over 80,000 views where um, my son's father serves me with custody papers. So um, fast forward a few years later, as of currently, I would like to do something about that. I would like to, God willing, um, get my son back with me. So in order to do that, I need to be home every day. I've spoken to lawyers and they're just saying, like, you need to be home every day. You can't be an over the road driver. So that's the that's the basics of it. So I've just relocated. It's just been a lot. It's been a transition happening right now, but God's really been taking care of me. So I signed my lease um, on the 21st of last month. So what's this? April? So 21st of March, I signed, like, maybe, what's that, 10 days ago, almost two weeks ago, I signed my lease in Georgia. So I'm now a Georgia resident, and God bless me with the car also, and also another job that I'm getting ready to start with. Potentially, I got hired on by CR England just two days ago. So that's one. They have a local position, but we can get into that next. Just remind me to let you know about that position because they're looking for 180 local drivers in the Atlanta area. However, I've gotten hired on with them and did the orientation with them. The second reason is because, so I had an agreement with my um, fleet manager upon my hire. Before I got hired, I was interviewed by a fleet manager. Joe was amazing. His name was Joe. He was he was amazing. Like I could tell he was really a God fearing man, like a God fearing man for sure. He was best, best, uh, dispatcher I ever had. And I've been trucking for four years. Like he's super considerate, super, um, attentive. Like he does not, he gives you, he, he makes sure you have what you need. So if you're like me, I'm the type of person that doesn't want to talk on the phone every day. He does not micromanage me. Like he, 
would just text me every so often, and I would text him every so often, but he wouldn't bother me. It would be days ago, but that's how I like to work. I can go a whole week without talking to a dispatcher because I, I know my job. I know what needs to be done. I just get it done. So that's what I really enjoyed about him. And if there was any type of discrepancy or conflict with my schedule or if I need to take time off or whatever, he just, he just made it happen. No questions asked. Like, he just make it happen. So there was him. In the beginning, he was with me all the way up the whole six months until maybe like three weeks ago. Maybe four, I say maybe the last month. He had, I guess he got called to another position. Or it could, I think he's at a whole other company now, actually. But that put me in the hands of um, a few other dispatchers. The reason I'm telling you this is because upon my hire, when Joe interviewed me, he, me and him had an agreement. So officially, I'm supposed to be two days, two weeks out and two days home. That, that's the official posting. But when Joe hired me, I told him that I like to stay out for long stints of time. I like to do long tours of time. So um, we agreed that I would work as long as I wanted to. And that basically, I looked at it like this. It's two, two weeks out, two days home. I looked at it all as a day a week off. So basically a day a week. So more recently, um, I'd say January to maybe March. Yeah, January to March, I stayed out for eight weeks total. So that's eight weeks. So I'm expecting eight days off, right? Every time I every time I've taken off with Joe on, I took off. I did similar situations where I would stay out for a, maybe like a four week tour and take four days off, or a six week tour and take six six days off. So this one, I took an eight-week tour, and I took eight days off. Every time I would take these days off, obviously, it's paid. This is the first company that ever paid me for being at home. But like I said, that's the agreement you take that I had. I would take so many days out, and I would take so many days off. And it was just a blessing to still be able to get paid for that. So that's what me and Joe had going on. When he left um, more recently, I told you I signed my lease on the 21st. Uh, like a few weeks ago. So on the 21st, I was supposed to get a paycheck from Dan Ross. I never received my paycheck. This is the day that I'm supposed to go and sign my lease and I don't have a paycheck. Mind you, yeah, I've been off eight days, but the I also stayed out for eight weeks. So when I spoke to, like I said, the new dispatcher, she doesn't really know much. So it was a, she put me onto the more experienced dispatcher and he was really shocked and didn't really know what to do. So he put me onto the operations manager. And that was the position that Joe used to have was basically he overseeing the whole thing. He was the operational manager. So when I spoke to the operations manager, he basically, um, we kind of went back and forth a little bit. And he just said, basically, he's not, they're not going to pay me because I took a whole week off. So he he refused to pay me. And he's like, you know, we're, you took you took a week off. So why, why should they have to pay for that? And as I told him, I gave you eight weeks of my time. I said, so you pay these people uh, that stay out for two weeks and they take two days off. You pay them, right, when they go home for two or three days. And he says, yes. And I said, okay. So I stayed out for eight weeks and I took eight days home. So I should be expecting a paycheck. So he basically said no and refused to pay me politely. And I said, I understand because he's just doing his job. I didn't argue with him. At the end of the day, like, I know there's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. And my manager is now gone. So whatever verbal agreement I had with my manager, you know, that's gone. That was the 21st. So as of the 20th, after that, that was really upsetting and disappointing. But I ended up signing my lease and I took, I used up, um, I just came off PTO yesterday. The 21st, after that happened, I took all 10 days of my PTO. So you get 10 days of PTO a year, which is really good with this company, too. It's a really good company. So I just took, I just said, hey, I need to take 10 days PTO. I took all 10 days of my PTO. So from the 21st until now, or until yet, uh, I got back on the truck yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, I decided I signed the lease. I got the car. I got a whole nother job on my PTO time. I went to CR England, did their orientation, got hired officially, and told them I'll start with them on Monday the 15th, and I came back here to work. So I gave them my week notice today. They they are basically telling me to go ahead and uh, take this load that I'm about to pick up now. It's going down to Georgia. The Rock Georgia is where they're one of their um, – Basically, we're one of the quad. We're the quad graphics is where I pick up from. So that's basically the that's who we're contracted through. So that's where I park my truck at since I live there now. So um, 
I'm going to take that load to Quad Graphics, pull, pull the rest of my stuff off the truck because I already pretty much cleaned out everything when I took my PTO just because I knew I knew what I was doing after they didn't pay me. I knew what I was going to have to do. So he just wants me to go ahead and um, finish cleaning out my things. And then I'm returning the truck in Pennsylvania and they said they'll get me home. So that's still a blessing, like the fact that they're still going to make sure that I get home and they're um, working with me because I had a coworker who... Um, is no longer working here. The guy I told you that only has six months experience where he was dealing with two other managers and those, those, I'll just say one of them I know for sure was like really rude. And, um, he told me that he, he gave a verbal two weeks notice. Like he gave a verbal notice and they, they, you know, pretend like everything was fine. When them to come back to work, he showed up for work and there was someone else in his truck telling him he's been terminated and to get his things out of the truck. So that, that um, prompted me to make sure that I put in a written notice. I don't know how true, you know, that is, but he was really upset about it. I don't know if they put the termination on his record because I asked him to make sure he verifies it. However, I just wanted to make sure that that's not what happened with me. So I went ahead and gave them my um, my written notice today, and I cc the HR the whole corporate HR, a personal lady that I talked to in HR and all of my dispatchers on it and let them know. So I was, to my surprise, um, my manager, the newer manager called me. She's a woman. I'm not going to say her name, but she called me and she just was like, you know, just checking in and following up and wanted to know basically why I was quitting. So I kind of gave her, you know, what I just told you, but a shorter version of it, but I was honest. And she said that I was eligible for rehire. And if anything ever came up that I wanted to um, come back to the company to just keep in touch and let her know. I thought that was really nice because, like I told her, if anything comes up in the Atlanta area that's local, I would have definitely stayed with the company. It's just that really was upsetting to not get a paycheck. So I would say, like I said, me having to go local for my son is one only reason. And then the other thing was like, I was really upset when they didn't pay me. Like, I didn't like that. And then the switch of the manager's. Like the whole thing, like I, I just didn't appreciate that. So outside of those two things, this is a really good company to work for. I would say if you're going to come here um, just before you leave, just do it smart. Make sure you don't do it verbally. Put it in writing if you're going to leave and uh, make sure that anything that they tell you is in writing, like even down to making sure you get an offer letter because that's what I did and making sure your pay is written in the offer letter. I also got like a $5,000 bonus to start. That was also another incentive why I wanted to come here. Um, they broke it down. And, you know, most companies, they don't pay you the bonus right away. Like this company, they paid me, I think, 1500 the first 30 days. And it was supposed to be 1500 to 60 days and 1500 I don't know how. It, w- it was broken up like that, but they ended up giving me, I think it was, they ended up giving it to me in, in two months. They ended up giving me um, 2500 one month and 2560 days. And I was like, whoa, okay. And it was all included with, so it was that included the 1600 guarantee. So I thought that was nice. And it's not something that you have to pay back when you leave. You know, some companies do that too. Yes, it's a really good company. I would um I would say that people would I would encourage people to work here. I would encourage people to work here. Okay. Okay, Dave Ross. Shout out to Dave Ross. Now, I would say this. I, I definitely appreciate a company that's open, that's honest, and uh, and the fact that the new fleet manager reached out to you and said, Hey, we're still here for you in case anything should change. I also say that if you get a good report with the fleet manager or with any fleet manager, it will make your time with the company great. And kind of of a side note, a side situation happened with me when I was at JNR Frugal. I had an awesome report with mm. my fleet manager. I mean, he made sure I got my money. I made sure I did my job. But as soon as he mm-hmm. left and they was bumping mm-hmm. me around to different people, we we just couldn't we just couldn't connect that's what happened that's what happened we we just couldn't connect as far as the pay yeah i can i can definitely see your your disappointment with that Uh, you you you've been out but wasn't you supposed to get paid anyway you you get paid every week right so the week that you was exactly the week that you was on or that you was off shouldn't you have gotten a paycheck for the 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 previous exactly. week worked oh well that's well that's 
that's what they're saying. So I guess it's like I got one check. I did get one check for the previous week work. But remember, mind you, I'm t- I took off um, eight days. So right. I got one pay. That was one paycheck, and it was still a few days, and then there was another paycheck. I can't explain to you how, like, it was like in the middle of a pay period. So it okay. was a second check coming up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. like, even though it was 10 days, it was like, I think I got paid but- – I think I got paid on the day that I took my vacation and then it was 10 days and I was supposed to get another check on the seventh day. It was like, basically I had got paid the day that I took my time off. Right. And then a week passed and I was supposed to get that check, but it didn't come. It didn't come. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. AC the Mogo, you're doing what you need to do. Yeah. Shout out to you. <laughs> we definitely had a conversation previously about what's going on between you and your son's father. And I definitely, yeah. I, I definitely wish you well in that. And you're definitely doing what you need to do to, to make that happen. So shout out to you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I say all glory to God and I say Jesus is good. That's what I say. Like, I really, I'm grateful and I I trust that it's going to happen in in due time. And like you said, I I feel like I'm doing everything that I can. And that's really like all I can do. So my son doesn't even know. He has no clue that I've gotten that God bless you with the apartment, um, the car, the job. Like, he doesn't know. And also, I got a dog two days ago, a puppy, actually. He's She's up there now, but my son doesn't know, like, anything. I just told him yesterday about the puppy, but I'm just going to surprise him because he's supposed to come with me for the summer. So I'm going to surprise him, and I'm going to tell him we're going to Airbnb, and then he's going to walk up and see everything. It's going to be great. The last time I talked to you, you was with the guy. Are, oh, y'all, are y'all still yeah. together? He actually broke up with me two days before I signed the lease. So I'm going through a breakup also right now. Wait, 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 weeks ago. What? The guy, mm-hmm. we, 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 we talking about the, the, the guy. We, we had an awesome conversation yep. about the yeah, guy. Yeah, we did. What the fuck? Yep, we did. What? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what is, how long have y'all been together before of years? Years? Two years, yeah. Two years. Two years. What, what? He's, he's, uh. He will be. He's, he's a, he will be the. He will be the team dude, right? You you would consider teaming with him, considering the fact that you had. Yeah, but that, he's not a driver. Oh, he's, he's yeah, but he's just not. He's not a driver though. He's he works at a veterinary hospital, and he uh he's just not. You know, he lives in New York City, so you know those guys. They don't need a car out there, so he only got his license like two years ago. Like he's not a real driver yet. He doesn't. Right. He's not. That's not his thing. Right. Yeah. A couple but I would if he did. I would have. Right. A couple of years. Mm-hmm. Why? Why the breakup? Is is it because of the fact that you move moving down to Georgia? You getting your kid back? What 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 was the reason for him to call it quits? Mm-hmm. I could give you the answer, and I could give you the spiritual answer. So okay. I, I think the fleshly answer has something to do with both of those things. Um. It was like you said. I think it was just a lot for a person that's never moved out of this, out of New York City. That's one, and then a person who doesn't have any children. So that's two. And then for me to be going through a court case, and you know, that was a lot for a person who's not a father figure. You know, who doesn't even know what it's like to have a child. I think that's one end, and then um, relocating. That was that was the other thing. Like you know, this is someone who's like I said, all only been in New York City all their life. So with those two. Um, aspects of it then you have to then we also like he also we both kind of consider this part what I'm about to speak to you about before because before we ever even got together I I actually left him back two years ago because of what I'm about to tell you now so um, he does he you know as you could probably hear that I believe in Jesus and and God so he um, is agnostic and he believes there is a God, but he doesn't believe in Jesus. And he doesn't, like, he's not, he believes that there's a higher power. That's what he said. But he doesn't, he doesn't believe in Jesus. So that right there. And then in addition to that, me um, being a believer of Jesus, I feel like I need to be married, you know, to, for me to continue fornicating is a sin. You know what I'm saying? So I was celibate when I got with him and, um, I pretty much chose him over God. So that's my spiritual, that's the spiritual aspect of it. So for me, that's why I said, I I don't mind if you record this because I think it's a lot of people that 
probably need to hear this anyway. But I think I, I pretty much chose him over God, and that's idolatry. When I had basically told myself and God that I would stay celibate, which I did for almost a year, and then he came into my life, and I knew that he wasn't a believer, and I struggled with that. And I also knew that he didn't um, quite care for marriage. Like, he doesn't care for it. Like, he understands why people do it, but that's not something that he desires. So that's also where we clash. So he, it's just we were unequally yoked from the beginning. So I had left him for it, and I chose God. And then eventually, like, he kind of... I wanted him. My flesh wanted to be with him because I'm like, he's a, he's a good person. Like, this is a good man. He's a good person. So I tried to make it work. And I just said, you know what, we're going to do this, you know, and he agreed, you know, he would get married because he loved me and he wanted to honor me, but it wasn't something that he cared to do. So that, that was, that was the whole thing. So fast forward to today or to the 21st, it was everything. It was me relocating and him not feeling like, He's where he needs to be as a man in order to lead me where I need to be. Like I'm doing all the, I'm doing all the hard work and heavy lifting and the thinking and making it happen. Obviously, like I said, got the apartment, the car with the help of God, not taking credit, but I'm saying I've did like my part on everything. I've even put in 20 applications for him in Georgia in his field so that he can see what his value was and he can see that, you know, he's capable of transferring. Not saying that he didn't, but that's just, you know, I felt like I was being a helpmate. I feel like basically I'm already a wife and he's not a husband yet is what he's, what he's told me, even though there's no marriage involved. So to make a long story short, that there's a fleshly answer. And then the, the spiritual aspect of it is, um, I, you know, I'm sitting here, I was sitting here last night in, in hurt and still in tears about what's going on, considering I've been handling things very well, considering that I'm going through a breakup. Nobody would really know unless I told them, but Yesterday, I was just upset. It was an emotional day for me. And today, I watched a, a sermon, actually. And in it, the man was talking about how it says that uh, Jesus, in the, in the scripture, I can't remember what it is, but you can just Google this part, where Jesus says, I didn't come to bring peace, but he came to bring the, the sword. So basically, don't that's not verbatim, but it's pretty, it's pretty almost accurate what, what, what the scripture was about and what it says. So basically, the sword is not a physical sword, is what the preacher was saying. The sword is because it's to cause division. He said, I come to put a father against the son and a daughter against the mother and the mother-in-law against the mother and against the daughter-in-law. And the, you get the drift. So any anyone who is a believer and they're in any form of a relationship with a person who's not a believer, whether it be a mother-in-law, any type of relationship, so in my case, it was a person that I potentially wanted to marry. I'm head over heels and I'm in love and I'm choosing this person. First off, over even over God, that's idolatry. That's one. And then on top of it, fornicating, that's two. And then on top of it, this person um, is a non-believer. So the sword is the division. So on a spiritual aspect of it, I'm grateful because basically it's God saving me. I'd rather, I'd rather him have called it quits. And, you know, I'm just looking at it as God taking me out of the situation so that I was able to repent and see things in a different light. Yeah, hold on. I was, I was, I love this man a lot. And it says anybody, if you love anyone more than me, then you're not worthy of me. If you love your mother more than me, if you love your, if you love your children more than me, then you're not worthy of me is what basically Jesus is saying. So, yeah, I feel, I feel grateful at this point. Like even in the midst of my sin, God's still saving me and I'm still a believer. So I tried to like get him to, to see things my way. And I tried to, you know, I've even, we've prayed together. I've prayed with him, but you know, if a person wants to walk away from you, you know, the best thing I can do is, is let them. And he said it himself that he knows that I'm a, 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 an amazing woman and I'm the best woman that he's ever been with and the best relationship that he's ever had. So there's no, there's no love lost there and it's nothing. And he made sure that I know it is nothing that I did wrong. It's nothing that's in my control. You know, he wanted to be honest with himself and true to himself. And for him being true to himself is he doesn't have a desire to be a husband. He doesn't have a desire to be a father or a father figure. And he is not in a position um, financially, he doesn't feel equipped to lead me or to lead a woman right now. Um, so it's basically all the above in addition to the Jesus and the marriage thing.
So it's it's all those things. So, you know, like I said, I'm grateful. Like he 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 left me when when Dan Ross didn't pay me that sixteen hundred that they were supposed to pay me. He left me the sixteen hundred. He didn't even know like this is God because he left me that randomly. We both didn't even know I wasn't going to get paid that day. He just told me he left it. And, you know, it's, it's no love lost. It, like I said, it was hurtful. But after watching that sermon today, I feel like it's just God saving me. And at the end of the day, like, if you're not, the, if you're not my husband, then don't waste my time. So I'm glad that he stepped off now rather than drag this thing out. And I'm all in and he's not. Shout out to him, man, because it could have been it could have been worse. He he could have he, he could have been that dirt bag that would have went down there with you and then turn everything topsy turvy and everything upside down yeah. so yeah shout out to him for figuring things out and seeing seeing things for you and also knowing that you need to do what you need to do to get your life complete and your life just wasn't complete without your kid and i get it yeah. So shout out to that guy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. AC the mogul, man. I like the haircut. Thank you. It's And that's something he did, too. He shaved it off for me. So I've been considering even growing it back just because, uh, you know, that's a, like I say, it's, it's bittersweet, no, even though I, I understand. Rock Keep rocking it. Well, yeah, but then I, I, I have like, to have another man cut my hair. That's I what like, I was thinking, like, do I want to? I, I, I like you. I, I like you both long and short anyway, so it really didn't matter. I, Thank I, you. I rocked it with you when you had long hair or when you had short hair. So thank you. Yeah. So I'm still rocking. Yeah, I've been you. thinking about it. I might. I don't know. I haven't decided. You know, that's kind of the least of my worries. But thank you. And yeah, you thanks for, for having me on and catching you, up with me today. Hey, no like doubt. Say, it's, it's, it's it's my pleasure. Yeah. It's my pleasure, man. Like I said, I'm 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 with you. I was there when you started. Yeah. I was there. I was there when you started. I was there with the peppermint. I was there with the, yeah. when you left. Oh I, was there, I was really there. With, that. I was there with the celibacy and the, and the, and the dude celibacy. Yeah, yeah I was there. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of being yeah. there, how how's the music coming along? Yeah, actually, I actually wrote a song about the the breakup. Actually, um, and I recorded it. I recorded it too. Um, I recorded it. It's it's it's. It can be heard, the recording, I could share it. It's just that um, it's not finished. And I'm kind of like, I feel like it's weird. Like I said, it's bittersweet because I feel like now that I'm not in a relationship, like I don't feel covered completely. Like I've, obviously there's God, but I don't feel covered. You know, it's just a difference between when a man is with you and walking into a room versus when a man is not with you. So when I went to this studio, you know, there there's a man in there, but he's like hitting on me the whole time and kind of like just, I would say sexual harassment, like trying to kiss me and like touching me, like, and I'm like saying stop and knowing stuff. So, but I recorded in the midst of that. And then I ended up leaving and I'm not going back. But the point is, um, you, I did, I did you, write a song about it and I'm working have, on it. Do you, do you have the recording on yourself? I do. Oh, I do. Okay. The recording. On, I have the recording. I made sure at least that's the least I could get. You gonna make sure you gonna send this recording to me. But okay. um, I, I honestly just I can let you hear it. I can send it to you. I'm just sure it's the beat that I want to use. I and, use. I use. I use your shop burden for my outros oh, yeah. on some of my videos. So. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 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 On some of on some of my outros for some of the for some of the podcasts, your your shop mm -hmm. burden is 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 one of the is one of the tracks. One of the three oh, female please. tracks. That's you, uh, Nifa Nee, and yeah. and three D Nati. So yeah, I oh, got. Okay. Yeah, she's dope. Yeah. So I got I got I use one of you guys for the for the outro. So yeah, man. If you want want me to want me to listen to it i'll definitely listen to it and if and, and if i could use it for our our outro outro i would definitely uh, promote it okay well i'll send it to you and you could check it out i'm not sh well we'll we'll see just text me on the promotion part of it just because i'm not sure if i even if you want to use the I beat. Didn't completely I got buy you. the beat and i'm not sure if i want to like I think what I'm going to do is go to a different studio and pick a different beat and just re-record it to a different track. Gotcha. Just because I I kind of don't want no parts of him anymore. Like the guy, I don't want any parts of. I got you. Um, yeah. So. All right. Yeah, well, and the beat well, wasn't, that's not the original beat. The original beat I wanted 
I found it was so fire, and I was trying to buy it, but I it was on YouTube. But I found that um, it was sold to um, what's that girl, that R and B chick? You know, you know exactly who I'm talking about. I just can't remember her name. She, it ain't but two, maybe two of them out right now. Um, Megan? No, R and B, not rap. R and B. Jeez, I can't even. Finger. I I can't. Even. It was on her album. What did they say? You made it. They said you made it to to her album. Uh, it's a bit. It's a big artist. I can't remember her name though. I think she got the fake lips and she broke up with somebody in the industry and she was um, making a record about it. Oh, Mary J. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Ooh. She's young. She's a young female artist. But she's okay. She, um, I can't remember her name. And watch it come to me once we hang up. Anyway, he sold the beat to her. 